time, bitch, I'm still a high roller. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Big Cat here at Pixel Entertainment. Uh, the Smash Direct is in literally two minutes. Two fucking minutes. So, uh, I was just doing a quick little test here. Oh. Ooh, it's on, it's on. <laughs> Here we go. Right off the bat. This way. Big brother. <gasps> He's my brother. We are your family. I'm so sorry, everyone. I feel like I have no choice but to... <gasps> no. <Smash>! What? <laughs> Holy shit! I, I have yet to play Fates, or whatever Fire Emblem game that one was, but... Oh my god. Whoa. This, this isn't as hype as it should be, but oh my god. Oh, what? Awesome. Damn. I bet Etika's freaking the fuck out. Nice. That's freaking awesome. Masahiro Sakurai from Sora Limited, the director of Super Smash Brothers. Thank you for waiting. This will be the last video presentation of Super Smash Brothers for Nintendo 3DS and Wii U. I hope you'll enjoy this finale. The main character from Fire Emblem Fates, Korin, will be joining the fight. Okay, if he was from Fates. As we developed new fighters, we thought to include someone from this upcoming game. That's how we decided to begin production on Korn. It's been a while since the new Fire Emblem title launched in Japan, but we're now just a couple months away from launching it in the rest of the world. So nice. you'll get a chance to become familiar with Korin before you play the game. As with Wii Fit Trainer and Robin, you can choose to play as a male or female version of Korn. Both perform exactly the same, so it's all up to personal preference. You may notice the sword in Korn's hand. It's the final form of the weapon Yato, called Omega Yato. However, that is not his primary way of fighting. Dragon. Korin has the blood of a dragon in his veins, and this lets him transform. This ability allows him to pull off attacks that no Hell? other fighter can. He's capable of changing entirely into a dragon, but some of his moves transform only some parts of his body. His side smash attack has tremendous reach. Holy shit. The tip of this attack is especially powerful, so consider how far you are from your opponent when you use it. When using back air attacks, Corrin briefly sprouts wings. He moves forward when his wings appear, which may just give you the extra boost you need when recovering. After activating a dragon attack, his head changes in appearance. 
Corrin's standard special can be charged up by pressing and holding the B button, the Dragon Fang Shot. If you land it, your opponent will be paralyzed for a bit. After firing, the transformed hand can also bite a nearby opponent. This follow-up attack can also be charged by holding the B button. This combo deals a lot of damage and can really launch a foe. Corrin's side special is a jump followed by a low thrust to the side, the Dragon Lunge. But this is not just a simple thrust. If you can stick your weapon in the ground successfully, you can remain hanging where you are. You can even pin your foe in place with this move. Wow. After pinning them, you can use a front kick, back kick, jump, or cancel. Pin your opponent, then decide what to do based on the situation. Nice. The up special puts Corrin's wings to work. Dragon Ascent. At full wingspan, Corrin has a wide attack range. You can control the angle for a wider attack too. Use it wisely. Corrin's down special attack is Counter Surge. It's a counter move familiar to fans of the Fire Emblem fighters. One big difference is a visual one, the Dragon Transformation. Look carefully and you can see that the opponent's attack doesn't reach you. Other differences include being able to launch opponents upward and attack left and right equally. Corrin's wow. final smash is Torrential Roar. You can pull in several nearby opponents with a whirl of water and then finish them off all at once. There is no exclusive stage for this new fighter. What about new music then, you say? Yes, if you purchase Corrin for the Wii U version, you can get two additional music tracks for free. Nice. The first one is the Fire Emblem Fates theme song, Lost in Thoughts All Alone. It includes vocals. The other is a remixed version of the same song we played in the new Challenger video earlier. Both songs will be added to the existing Fire Emblem stages, so you can adjust the odds of them playing in my music. In the Nintendo 3DS version, as a special bonus, we added trophies of Ryoma and Xander from Fire Emblem. <laughs> His first was for Robin. Please check it out on the official website. It looks pretty fucking sweet. We're targeting a February 2016 release for Corn. Damn. We will announce the exact date later on the official website. That's, that's pretty fucking cool. Oh, Cloud. From the Final Fantasy series, Cloud Strife will soon join the battle. Adding this character seemed all but impossible, but we made it happen. We have a lot of requests for Final Fantasy characters to join Smash Brothers, but of all of them, Cloud has been requested the most. Cloud will be available to download as a Super Smash Brothers fighter soon. I have some information to share about him as well. As usual, Cloud deftly handles a buster sword as big as his body, but we've weaved in some unique moves and elements too. His side smash will unleash a high-speed three-hit chain attack. Watch his sword move at lightning speed. The sound effect that plays when he hits is inspired by the original game. And the That's two types sweet. of costumes include the original from Final Fantasy VII and one from Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. Nice. The Advent Children costume has a version with the sleeve covering the geostigma on his left arm and a version without. Such detail. <laughs> An especially unique feature to this fighter is his limit break. A limit gauge will fill up as you receive damage or attack opponents. Oh, okay, it's like it's similar to Little Mac's KO gauge, but it isn't normally visible. However, Fuck. you can charge up the limit gauge with Cloud's down special attack while checking in on this meter. 
When the gauge is maxed out, his limit break will be activated. This will surround Cloud in a blue aura, slightly increasing his stats. And nice. for one use only, each of his special attacks will be replaced with limit break versions. Cloud's standard special is Blade Beam. This is a wave bullet that moves along the ground and it has a wide attack range. You can use it in the air as well, but it's more powerful on the ground. Damn. The limit break version of this special attack leads to a combo hit and a stronger launch. His side special is Cross Slash. It's Cloud's specialized sword move. By pressing the button three times when hitting an opponent, you can complete the Japanese word Kyo. It has high attack power, but if the opponent uses their shield, it will create an opening for them to attack just before you finish the combo. Fuck. Be careful. In addition to the damage, the limit break version has more launch power. Holy shit. <laughs> the up special is Climb Hazard. Strike the opponent, ascend, then press the button again to fall and strike at high speed. When recovering, make sure not to press the button a second time. The limit break version climbs much higher. The extra height is especially useful when recovering rather than attacking. Holy Sometimes shit. you'll want to save the limit break for later, but get launched before you can actually use it. Often you end up having no choice but to use limit break to recover. The down special is Limit Charge. With this move, you can manually charge the limit gauge. However, when the limit gauge is fully charged, the down special becomes a completely different move called Ooh. Finishing Touch. This move only causes 1% damage, but its launch power is extremely strong. Fighters who've accumulated a certain amount of damage better watch out. And of course, his final smash is Omni Slash. Perform a special combo attack on the opponent, then crush them completely with this move. Cloud had to have this move, am I right? That's pretty fucking sweet. And then the Midgar the stage, stage, which hackers Midgar. already had. It's a location you'll recognize from early on in Final Fantasy VII. Both the Mako Reactor and the Shinra building can be seen here. It definitely has that cyberpunk feel. Here, summon materia will appear, and the fighter who acquires it will be able to use summons. Ooh. Most of these summoned monsters will do something that changes the terrain, rather than directly attacking players. Ifrit. Ifrit creates an inferno that moves the terrain itself. Holy when you shit. touch the fire, you will be damaged. Stay alert and use strategic elements of the stage to your advantage. Ramu. Ramu manipulates floating terrain by attacking with lightning. You can pass through platforms that are charged with electricity, but you'll take damage. Hmm. Only the fighter who summoned him will remain unharmed. Odin. Odin can cut the stage in half with a single slice. You can avoid this attack, but if you don't, Expect to be instantly KO'd. Damn. The split in the stage is a good place to perform a meteor smash. Make sure you don't get caught in the middle when the stage comes back together. Leviathan. Leviathan floods the stage with water, which flows from right to left. The difference between Midgar and other stages with rapid currents is that if you're swept away by water, the fighter who summoned Leviathan will get points. Bahamut Zero. From high above, Bahamut Zero fires a devastating attack. It's an area of effect attack, and the flare will continue for a while, so the fighter who summoned him should try to force opponents into the blast. Whoever collected the summon materia will get a point for any fighters launched to their doom by summons. Try to get as much summon materia as you can. That's fucking awesome. We created Cloud and the Midgar stage for the Nintendo 3DS version as well. Of course, you can summon in that version too. Cloud's new challenger artwork was created by Tetsuya Nomura himself. I really appreciate that Mr. Nomura, who did the original design, also created the illustrations this time. 
It's really rare to see Nintendo characters in this style, and it's groundbreaking that a fight between Link and Cloud has been officially drawn. Cloud will become available for purchase within hours of this presentation. Once nice. distribution has begun, you may experience some wait times due to high server demand. Please bear with us. <laughs> the price for Cloud and the Midgar stage is shown here. Wow, six bucks, okay. I hope you'll Sounds enjoy cool. playing as Cloud, who miraculously joined the fight from Final Fantasy. That's still fucking hype. At the same time as Cloud, we will release a Chocobo hat for Me Fighters. You can use it to dress up your Me Fighter. And thanks to our relationship with Square Enix, we will release another Me Fighter costume. <laughs> no, no. From Super Mario RPG, Legend of the Seven Stars, we're adding a Gino Me Fighter outfit. Holy shit. Like the Me Gunner, Gino shoots from a gun on his arm, so it's a natural fit. Since this is our last presentation, here are the final Me Fighter costumes. The final costumes. Oh shit. Gino. Holy <laughs> shit. The chocobo hat. Wow. What the hell? Never seen that. WarioWare? Oh, that's gonna piss off so many fans. <laughs> the salt is gonna be so real. Wow, okay. Oh, the salt is real. <laughs> ah, damn. Holy shit. Okay, so they weren't lying about tails, but he's a me fire costume. Me gunner. Me fighters we showed in the past sometimes look like they have similar faces to the original characters in the intro videos and screenshots. On the official website, we have QR code patterns for some of these characters. If you download the Me characters through these, you can quickly create pretty solid look-alike fighters. So please use them if you're interested. Nice. It's been almost one year since we started creating additional downloadable fighters. Wow. However, this is finally the climax. Here's our last fighter announcement trailer. Please take a look at the final new challenger in Super Smash Brothers for Nintendo 3DS and Wii U. One more. Don't get careless, Pit. A challenger approaches. Huh? Oh, another angel. Must have missed one. <gasps> Bayonetta? Holy shit! <laughs> Holy crap! Who is that, Lady Palutena? It's an umber witch. I thought they were extinct. Oh my god! <laughs> Especially coming from an endangered species. Oh, the salt is so real right now. A bunch of people are gonna be pissed off. She uses four guns. Holy fuck! I like it when you play hard to get. Wow, they're huge! The wicked weaves attack summon the limbs of demons. 
God damn. Gotcha. Holy shit, that counter though. Nice. That costume though. Fuck. And you, oh my god. Don't tell me you're done already. She's so tough. Don't be such a wimp. Oh, I was gonna Fuck. Ooh. Time for the best part. Smashing. That's Gamora. She can also summon huge demons. Holy shit. Enough talk, goddess. Don't mess with a witch. The Umber Witch who hunts angels, Bayonetta. She's finally joining the battle. Wow. We've been asking for your opinion on the Super Smash Brothers fighter ballot, and Bayonetta was the number one choice in Europe. In North America, she was among the top five. This ranking includes even fighters from previous games in the series. Among the negotiable and realizable characters, Bayonetta was the overall number one choice worldwide. In Super Smash Brothers, Bayonetta is a fighter with many characteristics based on the original games. So she was number the more one you in Europe. To control her, the more you can feel that she moves like the character in the original games. Those glasses, though. First of all, she is a combo fighter, and not just weak attacks. Even her strong side attacks, front air attacks, and so on can land multiple hits. However, Damn. her combos are a bit slow to start. This is also similar to the original games. Each special move can strike multiple times, so you should be able to perform some very elegant aerial combo attacks, Bayonetta style. Oh, man, the salt is real. After an attack, press <clears throat> hold the button to continue attacking with her guns. Nice. This is programmed into almost all of Bayonetta's moves, so you can fire even in the middle of combo attacks. However, the shots themselves won't slow enemies down, so you have to watch out for counterattacks. Hmm. Bayonetta is equipped with four guns, one on each of her hands and feet, so she can shoot whether she's punching or kicking. Nice. It's possible to inflict additional damage to opponents at a distance, or steal points by hitting a fighter who's about to be knocked off the stage. What? The guns from Bayonetta 2 are called Love is Blue. And the guns from the original Bayonetta are called Scarborough Fair. All four guns in each set have different names. Wow. Here's her wicked weaves. For this attack, she uses her hair as a conduit to summon the limbs of the infernal demon, Madama Butterfly. It's her smash attack, and it's huge by any measure. When used at the edge of a stage, her down smash attack is massively effective. That's the count. The this fucking is pose. signature move, Witch Time. It reacts to the opponent's move in a flash and slows down time. This is her wow. down special attack, and it's activated like a counter attack. While your opponent is moving slowly, strike back. We can't make the entire game slow down every time she uses Witch Time, so instead, it only slows down the opponent you're countering. Okay. The length of slowdown time is determined by several factors. The higher the opponent's accumulated damage, the longer the effect. But if you use it repeatedly, its effect will be shorter. Oh, nice. When witch time is triggered late, Bat Within will be activated instead, reducing damage dealt by your opponent. Bat hmm. Within protects Bayonetta even when her dodge move is about to fail. Many of her signature visual effects appear as well, adding a nice. bit of flashiness to brawls. When she lands, butterflies appear. When she's damaged, roses fall. 
and aerial jumps show off her butterfly wings. During jumps and gunshots, unique magic circle effects turn up too. And in the Wii U version, Bayonetta's shadow is in the shape of Madama Butterfly. That's fucking awesome. Also, there's an extremely long taunt. You can cancel it in the middle too, so you can dance if you want to. Bayonetta has hmm. two costumes. There's the blue costume from Bayonetta 2, featuring her shorter hair, and the A Witch With No Memories costume from the original Bayonetta. There's also a color variation inspired by Jean. Wow. Bayonetta's standard special is Bullet Climax. She can shoot with her hands or her feet. The guns always shoot slightly upward, but you can fire continuously. Okay, that's pretty fucking cool. Also, if you press and hold the button, this attack will charge up. If used on the ground, hmm. her side special is Heel Slide. By holding the button, you can add a kick at the end. This way, you can make a combo as well. Ooh. However, if you use it in the air, her side special is Afterburner Kick instead. This is the first time ever that the name of the move changes depending on where you use it. If you hit your opponent in the air with Afterburner Kick, you can then strike with another one. Whoa. Also, if you use the Afterburner Kick after pressing down, then you can angle it diagonally downward. Let's just say, if you often use Ryu's traditional Hadoken command, it should be easy to do. This can also be used as a starting point of a combo. Her okay. up special is called Witch Twist. This special attack takes you skyward, but you can move immediately after you've activated it, and you can use it once again mid-jump. What? If you keep holding the button, you can shoot too. Try holding the button to rack up more damage. When recovering, use Witch Twist, then jump, and Witch Twist again on top of that. You can <laughs> even add in airborne combos and an afterburner kick after using Witch Twist too. Well, wow, that's kind of cheap. The more moves you add, the larger the opening you'll leave when you finally land. So be careful. Fierce okay, you know where they come back from. That's kind of cool. If you're on the receiving end, try to fend them off. Wow. Her final smash is Infernal Climax. The way this move activates is also very unique. First, Witch Time goes into effect and the entire screen slows down. The climax gauge will be displayed, which means it's time to damage opponents to fill up the gauge. When the oh. climax gauge is full, you'll summon the infernal demon, Gamora, who will lunge for any opponents you attack while maxing out the gauge. Once Gamora has finished chewing, if the opponent's accumulated damage is over 100%, they'll be finished immediately. So it works like nice. a danger zone. You can also throw in multiple opponents at once, so please try it out. That's pretty fucking cool. And then a new stage. That's fucking There's awesome. There's also a Bayonetta stage, Umbra Clock Tower. We've recreated this extremely memorable and iconic opening scene from the original Bayonetta, the Falling Clock Tower. Basically, it's a flat platform, but moving platforms run right next to it just to mix things up. If you want to win, utilize the terrain well. What? In the middle of a match, once you enter the alternate world, Purgatorio, you'll see an army of angels. And once you pass it, you won't see them anymore. Angels like Inspired and Fortitudo have guest appearances as well. Wow. For the Wii U version, we picked some memorable songs from both the original and Bayonetta 2. There are also songs arranged specifically for Super Smash Brothers. We hope you enjoy them. That's pretty fucking sweet. In addition to Bayonetta, we created Jean, Rodan, and Cereza trophies as well. If you purchase and download Bayonetta in Super Smash Brothers, you'll get them all. Bayonetta's new challenger illustration was Whoa. created by Bayonetta development team member Eiji Funahashi. <laughs> it's an impressive work showcasing the fight between light and dark, so take some time to soak in all the details on the official website. Damn. Bayonetta's inclusion is another dream come true type of situation. We'll need a little oh, yeah. more time, so please be patient until she is released. 
Just like Corin, we're targeting a February 2016 release for Bayonetta and the Umbra Clock Tower stage. Once it's finalized, we will announce the exact release date on the official website. Okay. And now we have some news about Amiibo. Oh. Amiibo of Ryu, Roy, and Rob, with his Famicom colors, will be released on March 18th, 2016. Please stay wow. tuned for retailer and pre-order information. And we can also confirm Amiibo production for the three fighters that we covered today. Cloud, Corin, and Bayonetta. Each of them will have Amiibo figures. Their release dates are still to be determined. Please wait for further information. Each of the newly announced fighters, Corin, Cloud, and Bayonetta, have specific characteristics and skills. Their battle styles are all unique as well, so we hope you enjoy playing as them and fighting against them. Damn. It's been over a year since we finished development of the original game. We've continued to develop new fighters and stages, and it's created a huge volume of content. The total number of fighters is 58. Counting the Nintendo 3DS and Wii U versions together, the total number of stages is 84. And counting the male and female versions together, the total number of Mii Fighter costumes is 99. There are Damn. 97 hats. The total number of trophies is 743 for Wii U and 707 for Nintendo 3DS. The total number of music tracks, such as stage music, is 507, victory tables and the like aside. I believe these are record high numbers for a competitive action game. In terms of sales, it's certainly best to create downloadable content while developing the original game, then release them close to the game's launch. But for this specific title, we created downloadable content from scratch after finishing the original game's development. Each piece of content requires intense work. Without your support, we couldn't have made it. Thank you so much. In Super Smash Bros. for Nintendo 3DS and Wii U, a variety of fighters have appeared, making possible certain matchups we never would have imagined. We hope all of these characters will continue to make great appearances in many titles to come. I greatly appreciate the developers of each game featured and the fans. Okay, so there might be another. That, I thank you. Probably just a trailer. Wow. A lot of people are going to be mad, though. Fuck. 58 fighters. Holy shit. Is, is that everything? I think, yeah, I think that's everything. Wow. Bayonet is confirmed along with Corrin. A lot of people are going to be mad. <laughs>